Matt has found the remains of a Zephactinus coming out of the rock right here. We know it's a Zephactinus because it's a big fish. Now, fish bone has a really flaky, kind of crumbly texture to it. It's very distinctive. And we know it's from a Zephactinus and not another fish because these elements are really large. The Zephactinus was the only fish out here that was that big. Our next step is to dig what we call an evaluation pit. Right now we know we have some fragments and some bits and pieces, but we're not sure if the skeleton is there, if there's enough of the animal to make it worth collecting. What we need to do is start by removing what's called overburden. There's a whole bunch of rock here above the bone layer. Once we dig through that, we'll look at the bone layer, dig back a little ways, and if there's enough of the specimen there, we'll collect it. I've dug through the overburden, now I'm ready to go. I've got my trowel, my pocket knife, my X-Acto, a couple of brushes, and some glue supplies. The idea is to carefully dig through the thin layers of chalk and expose any bone that might be there. The closer we get to the bone, the more delicate the tools we like to use. We've dug back a ways and we've learned a couple of things. There are still the bones out here that we first found. There's one big flat bone back here. We're trying to leave that alone because it's in kind of delicate shape and it's a little difficult to keep intact right now. There's also one big bone back here called the neurocranium. This is from the top of the fish's head. All the bones are going up towards the back end of the wall that we dug and that tells us that we need to dig a bigger hole. It's the second day on the site, and we've got a pretty good idea of what's preserved on this fish. We've got a neurocranium, an operculum, a sclerotic ring, a premaxilla, a maxilla, and a dentary. Basically, half of the fish's face is here. Now, we've done a process called perimetering. We don't know exactly where the bones are in the ground, and we don't know how far they extend when we start the site. So we dig a big, wide hole. We go back, and we expose bone until we don't find any more. Then we dig a little bit further just to make sure we've got it all. The fossil doesn't look like much in the field because we uncover as little of the bone as possible. That's a task that's better suited for back in the lab. The bones are really fragile and delicate, and the more we expose them out here, the more prone they are to getting damaged. In the next episode, you'll see how we jacket and remove the fossils. So subscribe to the channel and come see the Dinosaur Resource Center in Woodland Park, Colorado.